You got to tell me when a YouTube notification pop up because I don't have my phone. Okay. You got one? Yeah. Facebook is Okay. There they are. All right. Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you this morning. Glad to be with you for our magnificent Monday devotional supplement. Um, if if my calendar is correct, today is April the 1st. Uh, we are already uh, three months, four months into 2024. And uh, we're blessed to have you this morning for our devotional supplement. So as you're coming in this morning, as always, do us a huge favor. Press your like button. Press your share button letting everyone know that you're joining us this morning for our devotional supplement. Uh, Pastor Goodlow will be with us in just a few moments. Um, we are having an awesome time uh, over this holiday break. We'll be preparing to get on the road uh, right when we finish with you guys this morning. So keep us in prayer as we travel back to New Orleans. Uh, but I wanna hear from you. I hope that you're having an awesome weekend or have had an awesome weekend, um, let me know in the comments how things have been for you as we get started this morning. Again, this is our devotional supplement. Uh, we wanna encourage you, especially since this is the first day of a brand new month. If you haven't been consistent uh, with your devotional time with God, or you want to uh, start a new reading plan or start a new devotion or whatever it is, please do that and let's see if we can consistently meet with God on a daily basis, on a regular basis throughout the month of April as we grow individually um, in our personal relationship with God. I'm sure he would love to hear from you, to speak to you through his word. Now, for some of you, the best time to do that may be in the morning. I'm one of those morning people. Uh, for others of you, it may be best to spend that quiet time, that um specific set of that time that is specific and set aside it may be best for you to do that in the afternoon or even in the evening uh whatever the case may be please be sure to schedule that quality time with god on a day-to-day -day basis he wants to grow you he wants to inspire you he wants to encourage you he wants us to be changed from the inside out so as we're waiting for pastor goodlow to join us here he is He's getting connected. I'll give him a few moments to get set up um, again. Again, we are we are planning. We are planning for our uh, church school uh, summer camp. Our church school summer camp will take place the last two weeks of June and the first two weeks of July, the last two weeks of June and the first two weeks of July. So please continue to uh, keep us in prayer as we uh, prepare for those students that will be able to serve us. Uh, the camp is $100 per week or $150 for the two weeks of June or $150 for those two weeks in July. You definitely want your child to be there ages five to 12. Uh, they will take care of everything from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., lunch is included. They'll be doing math, uh, science, um, STEM activities also various um not nature trails <laughs> um visits and uh campus tours good grief if they're going on campus tours that early uh it's going to be exciting but you definitely want your children ages 5 to 12 to be a part of it um so we're glad that you're here with us i'm gonna bring in pastor goodlow at this time all right good morning pastor you all right uh, yes, good morning, good morning. But uh, I couldn't get set up on my laptop. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it came through the email. The link came through on my phone. Oh, wow. Email, but not on my laptop email. So I, got you. I can't see the uh, screen like I normally do. We'll take care of you. All right. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning on this magnificent monday good morning to those who are on the prayer line all right all right 
This is a magnificent Monday, the first Monday in the month of April, the first day in the month of April. We're already uh, one quarter of the way uh, through the year 2024. We're in our second quarter, starting our second quarter today. So good morning to each and every one of you. I hope all is well with you. Hope you all had a beautiful resurrection weekend. Uh, I know we had a blessed time, a wonderful time at Oakwood University celebrating um, our homecoming. Uh, awesome time there. So we thank God for being back at home, though, back at home with the wife and uh, family, uh, church family here. All right, so we're going to uh, welcome each one of you. I see Sister B.J. Ashby, Charleston, South Carolina. All right, Brian T. Booker. All right, Tammy Tucker. All right, Brother Frederick McLean, Durham, North Carolina. Tony Daria, Tobago. All right, Elaine Davis. Phyllis Wise, Lafayette, Louisiana. Frederick McLean. All right, Sister Hodges, Virginia Hodges, Las Vegas. All right, Betty, my cousin Betty Davis Harris, Huntsville, Alabama. Mary Wells, Las Vegas. Nisa Kimmelin Powell. Las Vegas. All right, Stacy B. Sister Myrtle Wimper. All right, Sister Deborah Cato. Veronica Dixon, Mobile, Alabama. All right, Sister Gail Grant. All right, got a chance to see Sister Gail Grant in Huntsville at Oakwood University Church there, where her granddaughter Cheyenne was uh, in the Aeolians concert. Had a great time, great time visiting with them. And Lee Lee, Lydia Charles also. All right, got Sister Cynthia Young. Catherine Knighton. All right, Pastor Benjamin. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie Francois. Yes, and uh, Stephanie got a chance to visit with her sisters and brother and family there in uh, Huntsville. All right, Sister Yvonne. Custard and Brother Herman Custard. Sister Esther Holmes. All right, Carletta Sterling. Elder Lois McGee. Saw her brother, Dr. Leslie Pollitt and Prudence Pollitt. All right, Sister Leola Cheney. All right, that was a prayer request. All right. Uh, oh, her brother. Want to keep her brother in prayer. Sister Leola Cheney's brother. He's out of ICU and in rehab. All right, Sister Cheney, we'll be praying for your brother. Okay. All right, Sister Gail Brown, Hammond, Emmanuel, Louisiana, in Hammond, Louisiana. All right, my cousin Kay, Huntsville, Alabama. Renee Dabney, Las Vegas. Marilyn Harrell, Chicago. Sister Lucinda Lawson, Houston, Texas. Shalita Jones, good morning, Shalita. Good to see you. Hope all's well with you. 
All right. Mobile, Alabama. Roger Lewis, Jr. All right. All right, my cousin Kay is asking for prayer for William Harris, Jean Jacobs, Camille Sevier, and Sylvia Scott. All right, we will be lifting them up in prayer. All right. All right, thank you, <coughs> Sister Gail, for the word of appreciation. We, we, we just want to show our support and love for our students. Let them know when they go off to college, we have not forgotten them. We are still a part of that family, and we want them to know that we support them and want to encourage them in their uh, uh, educational pursuits. All right, all right. All right, so we're going to get ready to get started. We want to welcome you again. If you are on uh, online, if you could push your share button, your invite button, invite someone to join you uh, this morning. All right, so let's get ready for our time of prayer, our season of prayer. So we're going to ask my wife if she can lead us in our prayer time. Yes, good morning. Good morning to the prayer line, uh, Facebook Live, Elder Woods. Good morning. I just want to say a shout out to, to the listeners, uh, the faithful listeners. Good morning. I hope you had a wonderful weekend, resurrection weekend with um, whatever you did, with your family, um, uh, whatever uh, you, where, wherever you were, uh, worshiping and just a whole nine yards. Good morning. Let us pray. Father God, we're thankful, Lord, on this uh, magnificent Monday. And first of all, Lord, I want to thank you for uh, traveling mercies for my husband that made it home safely without any hurt, harm, or danger. No uh, mechanical uh, situations with the car. Lord, I say thank you. And Lord, I, I bid uh, blessings over each person that you will bless each person as they travel back to their uh, particular locations, Lord, and that they will make it home safely, find everything in order, and that they will be careful to give you all praise and glory for traveling mercies. I ask a special blessings upon the sick, Lord, that are among us. We think of Brenda Clark with a uh, high blood pressure and um, we ask that you touch her body, her mind, and her spirit, and just guide her, Lord, to uh, do the things that she needs to do or uh, can do to bring her blood pressure back down, Lord. We ask a special blessing upon um, uh, Mother Aunt Ross, Lord, Sister Landry, Angela Ross' mother, that you will continue to uh, send your healing angels to her and surround her, Lord, and touch her body. And we think of uh, Sister Leola Cheney's brother that's in rehab and we give you all praise and honor and glory that he's out of the ICU, Lord. We think of Shalitha Jones. We ask that you touch her body, Lord, and heal her body, mind, soul, and spirit, Lord, and that she would uh, feel a healing touch from your hands, Lord. <clears throat> we think of um, William Harris and Jean Jacobs and Sylvia Scott and Camille Saver, Lord, a special blessing upon each and every one of them. Lord, you know their health situation. You are the great physician. And we bid, Lord, that you will just heal because you are a great healer. And you still in the miracle working and the healing business. And we just place all of these sick and shutting and, and people that are in the hospitals and rehabs and everything, Lord, at your feet that you will heal according to your will. And now we ask a special blessing upon the bereavement. We think of Danita Gant uh, uh, and the Lanier and Everson family as they prepare to uh, finalize their mother, grandmother, sister, Lord, friend, and uh, church member, Lord. We ask a special blessing upon them. And you know, it is a hard thing to be separated knowing that you will uh, 
be missing your loved one. But Lord, you promised that in that great getting up yonder that we will see our loved ones again. And that is our blessed hope, Lord, that when you come seen in the clouds of glory, that you will raise us up to uh, in, in all of this corruptness that we're dealing with, we'll, we'll put on incorruptibility, Lord, and there will be no more pain, no more death, no more sickness, no more diseases, all of no more crying, all of these things that will pass away, that we'll be in glory with God, Lord, and we just can't wait until that time come. We think of my family, Lord, uh, the loss of my cousin, the Royal Bates family, Lord, that's in Knoxville, who's criminalizing uh, my cousin today. We ask a special blessing upon each and every one of us, them, that you <clears throat> will comfort is only a way that you can. And we just be careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory. And now I bring to you my husband, my pastor, my friend, as he brings forth the word. <clears throat> all the other leaders, all the people on Facebook Live, YouTube, prayer line, Lord, as we differ in faces, we differ in needs. And so we bring you, all of us, Lord, we, we're coming with open hearts, open minds, and we want to be filled with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we are ready to receive your word. Continue to bless uh, your manservant, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for the prayers. All right, praise God, praise God. God is good. All the time. All right, so today, today, this is April 1st, 2024. And as you know, spring, spring started March 19th, 2024. And you know, uh, spring is a time for us to start fresh. Yeah. To uh, do some of those projects that we've been setting on the shelf, we've been putting aside, uh, we've been waiting for good weather. It's the time to get out and start doing our spring cleaning, spring cleaning. And, and, and so uh, a lot of times we focus on the spring cleaning, but today I want to talk about that spiritual cleansing that we need to do, that spiritual cleansing that we need to do. Uh, so we don't want to neglect the space inside of our souls, the core of who you are. So so, so, so as we get ready to do our spring cleaning, let's also do our spiritual cleansing, hmm. our spiritual cleansing. And let's talk about that. So the first thing you got to do, you got to take an inventory, inventory, do a spiritual inventory. Uh, 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 be honest with yourself. There are some things in our lives that need to go straight to the trash. We're talking about those things that are broken, those things that are mm. falling apart, those things that are covered with cobwebs that, that, that we probably never should have had in our lives in the first place. I remember when we moved to uh, Las Vegas mm -hmm. from Seattle, Washington, we moved out of a five bedroom house into a three bedroom apartment. We went down from 3,000 square feet to 1,200 square feet. And we rented the largest U-Haul and filled it up. Mm -hmm. And after we filled it up, guess what? A it. house was still half full. And we had to rent another U-Haul to bring all that stuff. And, and so we, we had so much stuff that we had accumulated over the eight years. And, and, and we didn't even know some of the things that we had because of, of the clutter. And as you go through life, you begin to accumulate things in your life, in your house, in your home, in your storage units. I remember we got storage units there uh, uh, with the idea that once we bought a house and got a larger space, we were going to get the stuff out the storage unit. Guess what? The whole five years we were in Las Vegas, all that stuff stayed in our storage unit. Mm. And then we took it out of the storage unit when we moved from Las Vegas to Huntsville and brought it to Huntsville <laughs> and think we're going to put it in the house. But we ended up renting more storage units 
and leaving that in there. So finally, I talked to my wife. I said, we just got to clear this thing out and get rid of the units. We've been paying rent on these storage units for, for years mm. and have not used it. So what I want to talk about, the clutter in our lives, our spiritual lives. And I want to talk about seven steps to clearing the clutter nice. in your life. Not just the physical clutter, clutter, but the spiritual clutter also. So the first step is to start with your heart. Mm. Start with your heart. That's the first step to clearing the clutter in your life, a spiritual cleanser. See, the Bible encourages us to draw close to God and to allow our hearts and bodies to be cleansed. This is the first step in our spiritual cleansing project. Mm -hmm. We can't clean ourselves for what we need to do. We need to draw near to God mm -hmm. and ask him to do the cleansing. One of my favorite texts, Psalms 51 verse 10 says, create in me a clean heart. A clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, mm -hmm. and renew a right spirit spirit within me. The first step to clearing the clutter in your heart, in your lives, is to ask God to create in you a clean heart. You need to understand you cannot do it on your own. Mm. If you could, it would have been done. <laughs> you got to give your heart to God and ask him, pray, ask God to create in you a clean heart and renew in you a right spirit. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart hmm. and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Mercy. So the key is asking God and then drawing near to God so God can cleanse our hearts from a guilty conscience and have our bodies washed with pure water. So the first step is to start with your heart. The second step is inside and outside. Hmm. When you start with your heart, you start it on the inside. But when you start with the inside, it will lead to the outside. Yes, Spiritual cleansing requires deep cleaning. It is a household housekeeping that goes beyond what others see and hear. See, a lot of times we just focus on what people see. We want to look good on the outside, hmm. but we can look good on, out, on the outside, but be filthy on the inside. See. see, God wants to be cleansed from within, from the inside. And as your heart is cleansed from the inside, guess what? The outside is going to change. Your language is going to follow. This is not just talking about bad language, but guess what? Mm. This is also talking about negative talk, nice. pessimistic thoughts, a stinking thinking that contradict the word of God and faith. This includes the challenge to stop the negative, pessimistic, thinking, thinking, and to stop complaining. Stop complaining. Listen to this text here. Luke chapter 6, verse 45 said, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. Hmm. For out of the overflow of his heart, the mouth, speaks. Amen. Philippians 2 verse 14 says, do everything, not just some things, but do everything without complaining. Mm -hmm. You ever been around somebody who does something, but they complain mm -hmm. all the time about what they have to do or what they're doing? Sometimes I feel like if you got to complain about it, why do it? That's right. If you got to complain about what you do, stop doing what you do hmm. and pray and ask God to change your heart. You know, uh, I, I remember 
and I've heard it many times. Uh, somebody shared with us. Uh, they they did uh, you know do a challenge. Go one day without complaining, hmm. and just be grateful, Amen. be thankful. Amen. You'll be surprised how much that would change your heart hmm. and change your thinking. Go one day without hmm. complaining. Mercy. One day. And then once you get through that one day, go another day. Hmm. When you get through that day, go another day. See what you can do. Challenge yourself hmm. to go through days. days. My wife said 21 days. 21 day challenge of not complaining. The third thing you want to do, and this is connected to the first, second, but the third thing you want to do is renew your mind. Hmm. If you want to change that stinking thinking, if you want to change that pessimistic mindset, that negative talking, and sometimes the negative talking that we do to ourselves. You know, we, we, we got something to do. We say, well, I can't do this. Or, I don't have enough time. Or, I, I, uh, you know, I, I'm not qualified. I'm not capable of doing this. We talk ourselves sometimes out of our blessings. Mm. So you got to renew your mind. This is one of the biggest areas of struggle for most of us, removing the garbage from our minds. Garbage in equals garbage out. Mm -hmm. We must feed our minds with the, and spirits with the word of God instead of the garbage in this world. Romans 12, 2, another powerful text says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Second Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Hmm. So what that means is that when these negative thoughts, these pessimistic thoughts, these uh, uh, the stinking thinking come into your mind, and they will come into your mind. And sometimes you can't control what comes into your mind, but you can decide whether you're gonna let those thoughts build a nest in your mind or whether you're going to get your rid your mind of these negative thoughts. And the best way is to pray and ask God to take these negative thoughts into captivity. Mm. And God would take those thoughts and, and eradicate them from your mind. But you got to pray. Hmm. When they come, don't wait, don't dwell on them, don't spend time thinking about what it would be like if you uh, uh, followed those thoughts. Of uh, uh, fulfill some of those desires that uh, that evil desires that come into your mind. Get rid of the thought immediately. Pray and ask God to take them into captivity. Then the third, the fourth thing that you want to do, you want to clean out your spiritual closets. And we're gonna come back. We're gonna be dealing with that this week. Those things in our spiritual lives. Just like we have things in our physical closets, we stuff them with all kinds of stuff, clothes that we hadn't worn for years, and we keep the clutter. You got to clean out the spiritual uh, clutter in your life too. Clean out your spiritual closet. Hidden sin will destroy your life, will de uh, 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 disturb your peace, and it will even affect your health in a negative way when you got hidden sin in your life when you got those closet skeletons those closet sins those cherished sins that you don't tell others about that you don't acknowledge that you don't confess to god that you don't ask for forgiveness that you don't repent of those cherished sins those hidden sins will destroy your life uh, uh, Psalms 32, verse 3 to 5, David said, when I kept silent. Mm -hmm. In other words, D David said, when I hid my sin, when I tried to cover my sin, when I wouldn't acknowledge my sin, David said, my bones waxed away through my groaning 
all day long. For day and night, God's hand was heavy upon him and his strength was sapped as in the heat of the summer. But then he said, when I acknowledge my sin to God and did not cover up my iniquity, I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and God forgave him and cleansed him from the guilt of the sin. Number five, let go of forgiveness and bitterness. And we're going to come back because this is a big one. We'll come back to that. Hebrews 12 says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily hinders our progress. Ephesians 4, verse 31 and 32 says, get rid of all bitterness, mm. rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with any other form of malice. Mm. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ has forgiven you remove unforgiveness and bitterness. And like I said, that, that's going to be one, we're going to focus on that one day. Number six, invite Jesus into your daily walk. Hmm. Invite him. First Corinthians 1 says, God is the one who invited you into this wonderful friendship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So invite him in your, start your day with Jesus Christ. Keep him with you as you go throughout the day and close your day out, thanking him for his presence and for his 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 his, his, his uh, hanging with you all day long. And then number seven, enjoy life. Enjoy life. See, some of us take life too serious, or we take ourselves too serious. Jesus wants us to enjoy ourselves and to learn to have some fun. God made you for his pleasure. Psalms 28 verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength mm. and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. Psalms 126 verse 2 says, Our mouths are filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for him. Hmm. So my brothers and sisters, as we, as we begin this new month, April 1st, 2024, mm -hmm. as we begin in the spring season, as we, many of us, going to be have some, uh, some spring cleaning projects where we're going to be cleaning out some closets, some uh, 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 storage houses, uh, cleaning out our cars and all these things, let's make sure as we take care of the physical that we don't neglect the spiritual aspect of our lives that's full of clutter that need to be cleansed. And we need to understand God will do it for you. Yes, he will. If you give it to him and ask him to cleanse you of all unrighteousness and create in you a clean heart. God bless you as we seek his presence and his Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 What a wonderful uh, way to start off the new month. Uh, shedding and letting go of anything and everything that doesn't reflect Jesus. Uh, I talked to my grandson this weekend and he was explaining to me that he had a, a wart on his, his foot. And so he said they gave him some type of cream to put on the wart. And he said, Gigi, that stuff doesn't work. I put it on just what the way they said to put it on. And, and the wart is still there. And I said, Isaiah, it takes time. I said, you keep doing it. And in and, and probably three days, uh, seven days, two weeks, however long it will take uh, when the cream runs out or just before it runs out, the wart will go away. And that's the same way as we are, that we are when we're making a change in our lives. We expect uh, things to change just as, you know, we do something that one day we think our whole life will change. But it's a process of shedding and letting go of whoever, whatever, uh, anything that 
hinders us and that does not reflect Jesus. So just don't beat up on yourself. Take the challenge and make the change. Allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in your heart and do its job. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank amen you. amen thank you for sharing those those principles pastor i think mm -hmm. um as we start each morning our motto is uh that we're here to exalt the name of god empower the people of god and enlarge the territory of god and i believe um if if we commit these to to our daily lifestyle it will it will bleed into every one of those points of our our principle of our motto for this devotional supplement uh, we we know through scripture that he will be exalted if we live by these principles. We will enlarge the territory because not only will we grow, but the people around us will grow as well. And um, we'll we'll just be all around models of who Jesus is in our lives. So thank you for those seven points. I hope you were taking notes. Um, but if not, you can definitely go back and revisit uh, this this uh, presentation this morning. Uh, very quickly, again, our upcoming summer camp for our church school, New Orleans Adventist Academy, uh, the last two weeks of June and the first two weeks of July. If you're interested in sponsoring a child or multiple children, uh, please let us know. Uh, we will, uh, will please let us know on our Facebook Messenger app. We will give you that information so that you can uh, support them. I want to bring up that banner. Um, One hundred dollars per week or uh, 150 bucks for the last two weeks of June or the last or the first two weeks of July. Uh, so those are the prices. Uh, we still have plenty of time. I believe it won't start until June, June 17th. <laughs> I almost said May for a second pass. It won't start until June. Uh, so you have some time to, to uh, get, get, your, get your funds together if you wanna support a student or, or two, uh, but continue to pray for our church school. Uh, continue to pay for our churches here in New Orleans. Uh, we are we are ready to do what God has called us to do, and we need your prayers. We need your support uh, as as we are praying for you and your respective churches where you are as well. So thank you again for joining us this morning. Um, anything else, Pastor? Before we close? No, that's all. Uh, all right. All right. Well, let's pray at this time. Father in heaven, we thank you again for your love, your grace and your mercy. We thank you for the time spent in your word this morning, uh, the principles that were laid out by Pastor Goodlow and the additional insights as well from Sister Goodlow. God, we, we know that um, we know that the principles are, are easy to jot down and easy to take notes, uh, but sometimes it's challenging to live them out because of things that are happening around us or things that are happening uh, in internally, and we pray that your Holy Spirit uh, continues to rest, rule, and abide with us so that as we seek to follow these principles, uh, there's there's some self-compassion and, and some patience with ourselves, as Sister Goodlow alluded to. Let us not be so hard on ourselves in trying to, to hit to mark, but hit the mark, but let us uh, surrender to you, to your will and your way for our lives. And um, in, in the next few days, in the next few weeks, we can start to see a change in our lives as we apply these principles to our lives. We're thankful uh, for those that have returned um, uh, home safely from uh, alumni weekend. We're praying for those that are uh, traveling to work or may be at work um, on today. And God, we're praying, uh, especially for us as we travel back to New Orleans this morning, uh, give us safe traveling mercies. May we arrive safely, but God, most of all, may we share your love, your grace and your mercy with others, uh, with those that are seeking, with those that we come in contact with. So we can fill your kingdom, those who love you, cause us to be the witnesses that you've created us to be. And Father, when it's all said and done, we are we will be thankful and grateful to give you all the praise, honor and glory for what you've done. Finally, Father, again, we thank you for the gift of salvation. And we pray that we see you in peace when you come. Your son, strong name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, for some reason, my volume went out while you were praying. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. But it came right back on at the end. So I don't know what's <laughs> happening with that. All right. Thank you all for joining us this morning. We pray that this will be the beginning of an awesome day, magnificent Monday, and a magnificent week. God bless you. Be blessed and be a blessing to someone else today. Amen.